Hello again, everyone. Edwin Werner back once again in this YouTube astrological segment. We're we'll talking about the zodiac signs and depression, part two of two. And yes, this does apply and pertain to the sun, moon, and ascendant. Anyway, the first thing up as far as uh, Libra goes, I'm going to be talking about uh, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces in this one. So as far as Libra goes, um, I would say the one thing that can make Libra very despondent, melancholy, and down, it would be not being able to ingratiate themselves with others, not being able to have relationships, whether they could be platonic or romantic or what have you, not having love in their life. These are the things that Libra, I mean, can really go to pieces and sometimes could wind up becoming depressed. It doesn't necessarily mean the full-blown, you know, clinical depression but or but it could be where, where one can become very furlong and very sad uh, because of this and I think the fact that Libra's very relaxed uh, demeanor keep in mind that Virgo often falls on the 12th house cusp in a solar natal chart for Libra and worry can I mean Virgo can correspond with worrisome energy and I think that the fact that the 12th house is associated with mental illness, which could include uh, depression. So I think if the situations become worrisome for, Ver for um, Libra and they become, you know, anxious and worried, this is where it could, you know, turn into something, I think, where they could become very, um, very sad, very despondent, and it could lead to some kind of depression in some uh, cases. And um, Libra wants to have peace too in their life, and if they can't have peace and tranquility, and the, the boat is forced to be rocked, this is what can lead to certain uh, very strong sadness with Libra, I believe. Now going to Scorpio. Well, Scorpio is fairly, I mean, it's a complex sign, but I think it's fairly easy to gauge what could make them uh, either despondent or sad or furlong or what have you. What, what happens is Scorpio is very synonymous with power and control. And if Scorpio is pest to relinquish their power to some degree, they're not able to have the situations, you know, right for themselves, being able to manipulate the, the situations and outcome that are their favor. They're, they feel hampered in some manner as far as this goes. I think that is what could lead to you know, the strong despondency connected uh, with, with, I mean, with Scorpio. I think those are things that um, you know could really put you know Scorpio in, in a very you know a, you know negative mindset and become you know. This is where I mean you have to keep in mind. I mean, too, Scorpio is also about their their privacy. They often like their solitude and seclusion. Uh, they don't generally like to allow others into their lives. If somebody brings a situation, say it's a significant other, and keep in mind that Libra often falls on the 12th house cusp uh, in a solar natal chart for Scorpio. And what happens is if Scorpio you know, is in a situation, say they have a significant other that's very gregarious and outgoing and likes to, is a socialite, likes to have people over, this could be something that I think surprisingly could actually impact Scorpio in an adverse way and could have uh, in, you know, an effect on them, on their, their mental state or what have you, or at least become very strongly despondent or dejected because this takes, because Scorpio generally doesn't like to bring too many people into their lives. And I think this is something that um, would, would something that would really impact Scorpio uh, in a negative way where they can become depressed, not necessarily the full blown again clinical depression, but they could become at the very least very dejected and sad and sorrowful over this. Well, now going to a um, completely different kettle of fish, uh, Sagittarius. Well, Sagittarius is, of course, I mean, they're very, um, Sagittarius is very expansive. They're very upbeat, gregarious, optimistic people. The thing that would really, I mean, make Sagittarius very melancholy and sad, I think, is just simply being around people that are overly pessimistic, overly negative, overly melancholy, the ones that put dampers on uh, situations and things that, that aren't willing to go outside of that box, aren't willing to expand their horizons. Um, if 
this is a thing too where i mean sagittarius is really i mean they're like a free bird they, they're like aquarius they like to be able to expand and, and move around and meander it's more simply by moving around outdoors going to different places where with aquarius it's just more of a general freedom independence issue but with sagittarius keep in mind that the zodiac sign scorpio often falls on the 12th house cusp on a solar natal chart for sag and what happens with Sagittarius I think um, what can get them down is if something has some someone has some very strong power and control over them where they have to where it might cause some kind of great uh, restriction where they're uh, manipulated where where they have to deal you know in, in, in some kind of you know it could be corrupt energy or something that is, um, is somebody people that are just you know not on the up and up there that are more surreptitious but it's more about the power and control thing because Scorpio is uh, associated with that uh, and, and these are things that I think could cause Sagittarius to feel you know down and out feel despair or sorrow feeling dejected or what have you so anyway now going to Capricorn well, Capricorn, it's interesting because they are the ones, I mean, of the Zodiac, they're probably the most melancholy on average of all the signs because they are ruled by Saturn. And Capricorn can come across as very cold and sometimes even undemonstrative. They're very, they could be very sad uh, people. The thing about uh, Capricorn is, is that what I think could actually, I mean, there, there's certain things that would, um, I think would cause them to become might exacerbate an already despondent nature. I mean, keep in mind, uh, Sagittarius often falls on the 12th house cusp of a solar or natal chart for Capricorn. If somebody tries to force Capricorn to expand the horizons, go outside the box, I think those are some things, being more philosophical about things, this is what could make Capricorn put them in a little a state of despondency or sadness. Remember again that the 12th house in astrology is associated you know, with their fears and also mental illness, which could include depression. Uh, if something happens, and, and given that Sagittarius is on that 12th house cusp, if something happens with Capricorn being as melancholy as they can be anyway, sometimes just generally. Um, it could be on a large scale, given that it's Sagittarius on that 12th house cusp. So um, this is something to where they are not, or they have to be, you know, around situations where people are overly lighthearted, I think, too, or overly, you know, overly effervescent and not taking things seriously enough. This takes Capricorn out of their realm. And I think this is what can cause certain despondency with them, actually, surprisingly enough. Now going to Aquarius, well Aquarius is very, I mean we know that they're very, you know, non-conforming and rebellious or what have you. They, they don't like, you know, they could often be innovators and eclectic and like to go outside the box, so to speak. Well with Aquarius, uh, the thing about them is, I mean, they're very, I mean, air sign, they're very amiable, very friendly. It's not a sign which which generally would become, you know, overly depressed or despondent. However, they are, that Saturn is a co-ruler of Aquarius so it, it can be in there a little bit with it, but not as much as uh, Capricorn but Aquarius though uh, the thing about them is if their freedom or independence is inhibited though that's something that can make them very dejected very sorrowful I think and also if Aquarius again it's not just the freedom and independence thing it's about innovate it's about the fact that they can't innovate if they're somehow in a regimented situation that's overly mundane it, it can be something where they're not free to do what they want to do when they want to do it those are some things that could hamper Aquarius big time I mean keep in mind that the zodiac sign Capricorn often falls on the 12th house cusp in the solar or natal chart for uh, Aquarius and being around people that are overly orthodox, conventional, regimented, these are people that aren't willing to go outside the box, aren't willing to innovate, that are just stuck in their ways. I think those are some things that can hamper Aquarius and bring them down 
emotionally and remember the 12th house can be associated with mental illness so it, it's that kind of thing which could actually lead to depression in some isolated cases now generally it won't be full blown, blown depression but i'm just saying strong despondency and um it's sadness if aquarius is in an area where they're under some authority and they're not allowed to be who they want to be it can cause some very strong sorrow hold on a moment people Sorry about that, I'm back. Now, last but not least, going to Pisces. Well, Pisces is a I mean a sign. Of course, could be very emotional. There, if they allow, I mean, Pisces is very idealistic. They they often will overlook transgressions and defaults and character shortcomings of others. As if they allow any kind of evil or nefarious energy to enter their life, or they actually become cognizant of it, these are some things that can make Pisces very despondent, very dejected, and not necessarily a full-blown case of depression, but this is something that could lead to them becoming, again, very sad, very, um, you know, very furlong, sorrowful to this. It's an energy that they don't, generally don't want to be a part of. Pisces is often about extricating themselves from reality, and when reality bites, figuratively speaking, and they have to face it, sometimes that is what will, will really hurt them very strongly and sometimes could lead to strong despondency. Keep in mind this zodiac sign Aquarius often falls on the 12th house cusp in a solar or natal chart for Pisces. What happens is if Pisces is forced to be in a situation where they have to be that, that universal friend that takes them out of often their isolation, their desolate you know, life in, in many cases, they um, or they have to see things more clearly and more objectively. Pisces often is averse to that because remember the 12th house is not just mental illness, it's about limitations, restrictions, our fears. So this is something that could happen um, to, to, to Pisces. In, you know, in, in, if you remember that Aquarius is often about friendships. If Pisces has to go out and, con and and make one friend after another and have one, be in a situation where they're they're forced to allow more acquaintances into their realm, more friends, I think this is something that they may you know, be averse to and could cause you know um, you know more of a sorrowful situation. I understand you know we might be thinking, well, what what nobody can really force anybody to do being that life well sometimes you could have people that are very domineering and they and they will just constantly coax you cajole you to go out and have this and have more friends and this and that um you sometimes people say they're doing that to just help you or be beneficial and you have domineering people that often will try to do uh do that but it's really more uh the fact that if, if pisces has has to is forced to just see things as they are in very objectively because Aquarius energy could be connected with what's very objective Pisces of course could be very subjective and if Pisces is forced to do that then what happens is they are um, it, it puts them in a state they really don't want um, you know to, to be in and can cause certain uh, despondency and um, and really and, and of course um, a lot of um, you know a lot of sadness and you know because Pisces is not I mean Aquarius can be about group activity as well and they're not often you know Pisces is generally not often um, about that so anyway people that will conclude this YouTube astrological segment until next time stay well